sorry, but where the fuck are all her comments containing unsolicited health advice from strangers? Feeling fat and being fat are something completely different. You may have a day when you don't feel your fucking best, but at the end of the day, you're still not being discriminated against. You're still able to get any job that you apply for. You're still able to date. You're still being able to be treated like a fucking person. TikTok is responsible for the spread of many stupid trends, views, and movements, but I can't think of one quite as dumb as fat acceptance. This ridiculous movement is all about, as the name of the movement reveals, accepting fatness fat people and being fat. I do think society should accept fat people, but I don't think fat people should accept themselves in a state like such. That would be like a person with cancer accepting their cancer and just moving on with the rather short remainder of their life without getting treatment. They are not doomed to walk the earth as the last mammoths alive and can do something to get healthy, but as the TikToks you're about to see shall reveal, the people within this movement don't think so and would rather act like they're oppressed instead. Let's get right into it. I hope you enjoy but i'm not sure you will what do we do when our fat faves lose weight let's talk about it cry about it on tiktok apparently i don't have all the answers but what i can tell you is i hate watching the same toxic patterns happening over and over online and i will start with this so then people don't get mad and this can be a really tough pill to swallow but no one owes you their body and it's never appropriate under any circumstance to share with someone negative thoughts or feelings about how their body looks or has changed. It actually absolutely is, because it can be an indication of the state of an individual's physical as well as mental well-being. What these fat activists often try to push is this narrative in which they claim that society doesn't like fat people solely because it doesn't find them attractive. In reality, the biggest issue with being fat is obviously its consequences on one's body. I mean, she's saying you shouldn't under any circumstances share with a person negative thoughts about how their body looks or has changed. And while I think she's referring to how you shouldn't shame someone for their appearance, and while I also agree that you shouldn't fat shame someone unless you're just joking, you should definitely be allowed to share your thoughts about a person's size with them. It doesn't just boil down to what they look like. If being fat only came with the consequence of not being viewed as exceptionally attractive by most within society, then honestly, that's not that big of a deal. Who gives a shit, right? But this just isn't the case. There are bigger issues with being fat than not being viewed as attractive, which is why not saying anything is stupid. But here's the toxic pattern. Fat persona loses weight. Fat fan expresses some hurt or disappointment. Imagine being so full of yourself that you're hurt and disappointed by someone getting the only life they have together and losing weight instead of being happy for them just because you lack the discipline and strength to do it yourself. That's another level of pomposity, honestly. And then... Thin fans take that as their opportunity to go in and be like, you know, fuck you, body positive police, mind your business. They look amazing. They're just doing this for their health and just throw in a bunch of other like anti-fat, fat phobic sentiments just for good measure. Hold on, did this absolute pinhead just assert that losing weight for health reasons is fat phobic? I'll explain this to her and hope she can still hear me and hasn't already got diabetes. The word fat phobia, which to no one's surprise doesn't even exist in the Oxford or Merriam-Webster dictionaries, is defined by CollinsDictionary.com as the irrational fear of aversion to or or discrimination against obesity or people with obesity. When you take this definition into consideration, losing weight for health reasons is not fat phobic. Losing weight just to not be fat would be. But even then, I think that's a brilliant idea, and I also think the more videos I make on this topic, the more fat phobic I become. And then the persona will often encourage this type of discourse. If you are not fat and have never been fat, here's the context that you're missing. Imagine every piece of media that you engage with, every movie, TV show, song, all of it tells you you're bad and wrong. Can these people please desist with the sentiment that being fat is anything but bad and wrong? She's making it sound like fat people were born fat and should just be accepted for who they are. Being fat makes you ill. It is very harmful to your body and therefore we should be happy that we can do something about it. And then you find one little corner of the world that says, you know what? No, you can be loved and successful and funny and talented and adored just as you are. 
How can a person be this ignorant? Honestly, you aren't just as you are by being fat. You weren't involved in some life-changing sudden accident and woke up three hours later looking like a red giant. That is on you. You made yourself that big. Now can you please get that into your thick head instead of making up some bollocks excuse for your laziness? And then that window slams shut and tells you the same things that the rest of the world has told you. It's not about that person. It's about fat people when the world has ostracized them, making an individual their safe space. Oh, so because you're too pathetic to pull yourself together and lose weight, you decide to reduce or realistically expand some celebrity to their weight and body size. Now they dare not lose weight because that might hurt your large fatty heart. Imagine being so self-centered that you force someone to live in an incredibly unhealthy way just because you can't be bothered to change your ways. I'm sorry, but where the fuck are all her comments containing unsolicited health advice from strangers? Um, are you demented, love? Just like there's a difference between an alcoholic drinking alcohol and the average person drinking alcohol, there's a difference between an obese person eating a fuck ton of unhealthy food and a normal-sized person doing so. Now, does that mean I condone it? No, not at all. That's exactly how you'll end up fat. Not to mention I don't believe in cheat days, but the fact she has cheat days means she's paying attention to her diet and is quite possibly also working out, something a fat person eating all that food certainly isn't doing. Where are the comments worried about her health, saying she's gonna die by the time she's 40? This woman won't die by the age of 40, at least not from any complications related to obesity, because she absolutely is not obese. Even if she ate all that food, she wouldn't have woken up the next day looking like this fine gentleman. Where are the people counting her calories, although she didn't ask for them? Where are the people saying that it's disgusting to put that much food in your body? Where are the people assuming she eats like this every day based off of a 60 second fucking ticket? talk nowhere is your brain hemorrhaging or what the fuck is going on did you not hear this in the beginning of the video yeah, so why would anyone say that? Also, she's quite obviously just playing, because when you look at her video, there's even more fucking food, and unless she's Matt Stoney, she couldn't have possibly eaten all that. Go, go right now, click on her video, go in the comment section, and see if she even has a quarter of the hate comments I get in all of my What I Eat In A Day videos. This woman isn't making any sense to the point where she's actually making me angry. Obviously, the reaction to a fat person doing a What I Eat In A Day TikTok is gonna differ from that of a normal-sized individual, because one is eating this irresponsibly on a daily basis which made her become overweight while the other is not. And while I don't condone the hate she's getting for her what I eat in a day TikToks, it is to be expected when she's abusing her body like this and then, as if that's not enough, cries about thin privilege on TikTok. Feeling fat and being fat are something completely different. You may have a day when you don't feel your fucking best, but at the end of the day, you're still not being discriminated against. You're still able to get any job that you apply for. You're still able to date. You're still being able to be treated like a fucking person. First of all, let's not exaggerate here. You are definitely being treated as a person when you're fat. You might even be treated as several in that case. And also, guess what? The only thing you have to do in order not to be oppressed or whatever the fuck you call it is lose weight. It's not healthy anyway and you'll feel much better. So, like, at the end of the day versus what you feel and what you actually are are two different things and they don't really fucking matter. At the end of the day, a size 6 is not fat, so if you're going around calling yourself fat when you're a size 6, you're the fucking problem. No, being fat is actually the problem. I'm done. This is going to be my last response to any of these comments because it's like y'all are just missing what the fuck I'm saying on purpose because y'all love to be oppressed. Y'all love to be agitated. So be agitated. Imagine thinking you're oppressed because you're fat. You're oppressing the world, not the other way around. I love when people say this. Until recently, I've almost never seen my body represented anywhere. Shocker, fat woman crying for representation. I grew up wishing I was different, but now I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of my stomach. I'm not ashamed of my back fat. I really don't care that I have cellulite. If I can help one person feel represented, I've done enough. And here we have yet another fat person thinking this is all just about looks. 
That's probably the most this woman's moved in a decade. She's severely obese as you can very easily tell and instead of getting help for it, she's on TikTok presenting a disgusting, incredibly unhealthy looking body while dancing to music she probably can't even hear anymore because judging by her resemblance to this guy, her blood pressure's all over the place and is probably causing hearing loss. Not to mention there's probably a gallon of sweat under every single one of her fat flabs and rolls. There's nothing to celebrate about this. I'm surprised she can still move considering her veins and arteries are probably completely blocked and there's no blood running through them. Not really much of a pencil skirt anymore, is it? The only reason you say fat people are oppressed is because the world isn't cut out exactly for them, which is something these fat people could easily change because the world certainly won't, and if you're fat and you're expecting the world to always cater to your special needs, you need to shut the fuck up and get a grip, preferably on a treadmill. Fat people don't get to shop conveniently because their sizes aren't available most of the time, which I think is a very good thing, since nothing else will make them lose weight anyway. The reason fat people are denied certain jobs is because either they're too ugly for the job, like modeling and sex sells, or because they couldn't do them properly. Imagine a 300 pound woman as a waiter. That's too much movement. If you're referring to how all of this is systemic, then you're right. You'd be stupid to believe that Western civilization will ever make everything align with fat people's lifestyles. We won't embrace something so unhealthy and create one plain seed, which is the size of two plain seeds in the future, just because you lack the discipline and will to change. I don't think it's the worst thing, but it certainly isn't a good thing either, and anyone who's fat should try to change that. Also, you're not oppressed, because you know what oppressed people wouldn't do? Glamorize oppression, dance to it, and make it look like a competition. You're nothing but a lazy, narcissistic crybaby. An exceptionally heavy crybaby, that is. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Don't forget to comment on future video suggestions and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.